Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to talk about certain type of beads and it's jig of tungsten bead. Uh, I'm going to talk about reasons why I love it uh, or why I don't like it and I will tie a fly with it. Uh, uh, showing uh, on a on real example how I work with it and giving you the reasons why. So without any further ado let's just jump into it. So for this particular fly I'm going to use size 16 hook. It's long shank hook by Arex. It has rather large R and that's very important uh, because of the way we are going to mount this. There are two ways. There is first of all first advantage there is no wrong way how to mount this bead so you can do it like through the small hole sorry so you can do it through the small hole and like so will give you as you can see let's say normal look you can do it with uh, going through the this indent first Okay, and this will going to give you a more like, let's say, sort of balanced, uh, balanced look. But what's going to give you balanced look for sure is if you use jig hook. And let me demonstrate that. So, if you go with this indent, well, with the hook point through the indent first, not through the small hole, you will see what happens look how much forward the bead is tilted it's a lot it's going to change the weight distribution of the fly a lot and that some people then they love it and if you want those balanced flies well maybe it's time to start using jig off so for this particular fly and I maybe for most of my flies that I do with jig off I use the indent first now, first of all, I told you that I'm going to talk about advantages and disadvantages. So let's talk first about advantages. First, and the obvious one is that obviously I'm using straight shank hook, it's not jig hook, and I'm getting that inverted effect. Second one is that even though uh, you are using, for example, small, small fly, if you use small fly with rather large bead, like here, this is size 18 hook and 3.5 millimeter bead. Uh, you can see that it's like rather closed. Even this uh, here is closing gap a little bit. Uh, there is not too much room for the body, so not very good solution. Not bad. I mean, I've been using it for it for a long time, but jig off is much better, as I will show you right now. Now look at this one. Looks much better. I added this hotspot that the decreased a little bit this gap but it's still better than with regular bead uh, you can you have actually more body to it so you can tie proper fly on the hook uh, you can also use uh, curved hooks gamaris hooks and then you will have that tilted up, up body um, as I just said like you can use even curved hooks for this and if you use rather large bead, sometimes the, the bead can, as you can see, slip over here. So what do you do there? You just start your fly as you would start normally. You can start it from this side, from this side, it doesn't matter. It does matter to create a nice foundation. Um, I'm going to show you what I do here. Now, if you want, because obviously there is a whole diameter here you can create the same diameter with your thread use flat thread for do doing that because it will make more friction when you go with your bead over it okay yep that's that's it that's perfect now it fits perfectly now do figure of eights And now as you can see, I'm using a rather large bead. You can even move it a little bit more forward if you want. I'm using rather large bead uh, with a small hook 
uh, the hook gap, gap is open so it's the hooking power is still there uh, you won't miss the fish as much and uh, smaller fly will actually sink faster down the column water column and uh, let's just get into tying with tying uh, before I start that I will tell you just uh, what is the well biggest disadvantage to it the biggest disadvantage to it is uh, time uh, that it's necessary to mount on the bead you need time to secure it it's not like slotted bead that fits the slot and then it wobbles a little bit but nothing too much this one will spin around the hook if not mounted properly just let me put the thread into the bobbin holder okay it's good to start with flat thread creates, creates less bulk and what I like to do is uh, let's just push it with my nail over here and go between nail and tungsten go with the thread from time to time untwist and flatten the thread it's nice to build up that habit now I forgot to mention one little thing let me just try to see if I can show you why I'm pushing this forward because there is a little there is a little slot over here that you will see right now so you can see it from this side there is a little slot so my assumption is that hook eye fits into it and it cre uh, creates that gap so the, uh, the bead won't uh, circle around the hook that's just my assumption but it seems right because as you can see I just pressed it against uh, that slot and it's moving I mean it's wobbling a little bit but it's not bad bad it's not super bad I mean if I apply a little bit more force it will definitely start spinning around uh, but to prevent that I'm just gonna use a little bit of super glue uh, super glue is your friend here um, don't be afraid to use a little bit of super glue on your flies as you can see just a tiny little drop here that will soak into the thread okay now first things first I'm going to use tragopan for the tail some people think the tragopan uh, which is from pheasant, a pheasant family I think uh, some people think it's almost magical material uh, I have to admit I don't think so but I do like how it looks like so the only reason is that I like how it looks like a tail uh, or some other details you can do with it for example you can do uh, body cover like use feather for the along the whole body now as you can see I'm going with my flat thread uh, preventing build up of a bulk now we need two more details one of them is buy it to make body cover you can use anything you can use raffia you may use some nymph skin uh, I like to use bias because it's natural material and I like to use natural materials a lot now you can use the friction of the thread to push by it forward if you know how to control it then it will lay right on the top of the hook so just by controlling the pressure you will put the bayet on the top of the hook shank and then if you don't push your thread constantly then you you won't spin this little tag end so what you want to do release the pressure and then apply the pressure release but there should be tightness in the thread so apply release apply release apply release apply release apply and that's how it's going to prevent this from spinning around the hook shank now the next step is to add some wire and I'm going to add it well I'm going to add it on this side remember flatten the thread from time to time is going to make your life so much easier okay 
now it's time to add some dubbing as you can see I haven't built up too much too much uh, bulk over here I mean I can always use 18-0 thread but it's not necessary so for the dubbing I'm going to use squirrel a little bit of yellow CDC a little bit of purple and pink UE dubbing here so how I dub clockwise that's something I learned just recently because with each thread wrapper on the hook you introduce one clockwise turn so if you do the same uh, direction of dubbing then you will actually as you wrap your thread the dubbing will go with the thread and it will tighten itself a little bit more so take a little just a little dubbing like make your fingers dirty and do clockwise motion and as you can see it's very tight and thin noodle the reason why I do the thin noodle is not to save materials which would be a good reason it's to make more it's, it's to have more control over my dubbing over the shape of my body and to create <coughs> more tight body which will last actually more uh, if you put more dubbing it won't last more because when you put a lot thick dubbing noodle over the thread when you go with the thread around the hook that uh, dubbing will make a cushion which will prevent thread from creating uh, enough friction to hold all those, all those materials it won't happen like the fish won't uh, brush it out immediately but it will happen over time with this it happens a little bit more slower so I'm just gonna cover the body here now add a little bit of taper here as you can see and that's it like just a couple of wraps now I'm gonna pull all those fibers downwards and go with by it over the top of the hook shank when you're satisfied just do it a little bit more now I'm gonna rip everything I'm removing hairs if you are trying to go upwards I'm just gonna pull them downwards to make more neat look on the back of the fly now I'm talking about this uh, preserving thread wraps so you can go backwards now because the the, the wire is holding the bite and you can catch the wire with a couple of wraps here break off the wire and what I like to do is just fold back this you can flatten it a little bit with your nail and whoop finish the fly at a certain point now, the reason why I'm doing this oops, is because I want to change the thread I'm gonna use orange because orange is going to be my hotspot now for the legs and thorax I'm gonna use a little bit of hairs dubbing which is again mixed with this purple and pink dubbing and I love it because it has those guard hairs that will suggest the legs properly yeah. now what I failed to mention at the beginning of the video but for those of you who are staying who stayed here um, is that it is important to have a rather large eye of the hook for this this type of the bead because if you use too small hook then the bead can slip out which well it's not desirable so I'm going backwards to cover a little bit of this wing case and then I'm gonna proceed forward and as you can see I made a rather thick noodle quite opposite than what I did here the reason is simple I want to brush it out and suggest legs or I will just leave fish to brush it out because it has plenty of legs right now so 
I'm, I'm, as you can notice I'm pulling those hairs downwards okay this is more than enough you can fold it back if you're not sure is it if it's locked or not and then do the web finish knot over here sometimes I like to do that because it locks better everything because it's a nymph it hits the bottom I do two web finish knots just in case but what is important is to advance your knot to the front towards the front and tighten it towards the back So guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and see you next week.